The end always fascinates. How could a 140 million year reign be extinguished so mysteriously and with such finality? What terror came out of the skies to end the dinosaurs? Or was it terror of another kind? Whatever it was, it stripped the earth clean of 75% of all plant and animal life and all the dinosaurs. Among them, the Hadrosaur, a gentle giant over 30 feet long and weighing three tons. Called a duck-billed dinosaur because of the shape of its mouth, these giants were vegetarians. They lived on the edge of forests. It is speculated that, unlike modern reptiles, they lived in herds to protect themselves from predators. His findings confirm how the duckbills may have built their nests. Based on the evidence that these dinosaurs herded, some scientists assume that the nest building was a collaborative effort within the herd. Like reptiles today, the nest is protected before and after the egg laying. A duck-billed dinosaur, it's believed, laid 20 to 25 eggs in a circular pattern. Scientists don't know how long it took for the eggs to hatch, but they do know that the eggs were about eight inches long, about the size of a grapefruit, surprisingly small for what would eventually become a three-ton duckbill. Life for the duckbills was hazardous from the start. The Struthiomimus, an agile and fleet-footed dinosaur that resembles the modern-day ostrich, was a predator that mother duckbills feared most. The Struthiomimus, with little in the way of a defensive arsenal, no horns, no giant tail, no sharp talons, was a natural victim for other, more aggressive dinosaurs. The speed of the Struthiomimus, normally its strongest asset, occasionally failed it especially when matched by that of the Deinonychus. The Deinonychus, Greek for terrible claws, were fierce creatures that weighed less than 200 pounds. They may have traveled in hunting packs like wolves today. Their speed and their dreaded claws made them fearsome enemies. For the duckbill, survival was possible by the number of eggs originally laid. Life, the species, could continue.
dinosaur eggs hatched like those of other reptiles today. At birth, the baby dinosaur was only 12 inches long and about one and a half pounds. If he made it to adulthood, he'd grow to be 6,000 pounds. Brontosaurus liked dry environments, upland environments, not swamps. They favored the dry conifer forest, and their preferred food wasn't some sort of watercress, but conifer needles. We also used to think that the Brontosaurus was the largest dinosaur in existence. In 19... The baby duckbill would reach the size of the platyosaur, or a German shepherd, very quickly. He would still be too short to reach the best foliage. Duckbills, it's estimated, ate about 200 pounds of foliage a day, and like a cow or elephant today, spent most of his waking hours eating. Eating techniques have to be learned, and the duckbills seem to have spent time with their young teaching them. But like all of nature's creatures, the child must one day go exploring by himself. Duckbill tail weighed 2,000 pounds. If it were fortunate enough to catch the Tyrannosaurus rex off guard and knock it off its feet, it would have enough time to escape. For once down, the Tyrannosaurus rex couldn't get up easily. But if the Tyrannosaurus rex was denied today, he would almost certainly prevail another day. Among those who lived in his kingdom were the Monoclonius. Like our duckbills, these vegetarians also herded together for protection. They were slow moving. Their single horn and their thick hides were their only defense. Terror is signaled by the snap of a twig. Eighteen feet tall, forty feet long, the Tyrannosaurus rex had powerful hind legs that could propel him forward relentlessly.
If there are dinosaurs living today, they would be survivors of the extinction that has mystified scientists. There are many theories about their extinction. One is that the dinosaur's destiny was written in the sky. A cosmic shower of asteroids or a large meteor struck the Earth with an astounding impact. It created an impenetrable dust veil that blocked out the sun, killing off much of the plant life. An Earth robbed of the life-giving force of the sun, the theory holds, would soon be deprived of food for the plant-eating dinosaurs. Their passing would soon deprive the meat-eating giants of food. It was like a nuclear winter the Earth suffered an untold loss of life. In a matter of months, the food chain would have broken down. The largest and the most dominant creatures on Earth perished. For the dinosaurs, it was the end of a 140 million year reign on Earth. Scientists agree that an asteroid killed the dinosaurs. Paleontologist Bob Bakker. They're not creatures from museums or fossil beds. They're made of more than rock and sand. They're eternal because they live in our imagination. 